At the beginning of this year, I started making a film about 5G and the people that claim it makes them ill. Uh, she uh, probably died as a result of 5G, but we can't prove anything. This movement had become a phenomenon, with conspiracy theories being spread through Facebook groups, political parties, and protests. 5G, she had to kill. Its members claimed that 5G was threatening to kill off their families, causing mental health issues, cancer, infertility, Alzheimer's, and autism. It gives bigger risk of cancer. It can affect the heart rhythm, smart meters as well, which are being rolled out like sweets. Now they even claim that it's linked to the coronavirus pandemic and impassioned disciples are burning down mobile phone masks around the world and spreading misinformation, encouraging people to ignore safety measures and interfering with vital communication services, endangering people's lives. To understand how the 5G conspiracy theory has spread so quickly, I spoke with Dr. David Robert Grimes, an expert on how science and society interact. What are the concerns around implementing 5G across the country? Well, it's really interesting because a lot of the fears that are surrounding 5G at the moment are actually echoes of previous fears. A lot of them have a superficial or indeed quite deep resemblance to stuff that was said about Wi-Fi networks 15 years ago. What is interesting now, I suppose, is that the fears we're hearing have gotten a lot more traction. But why is it that these, these fears are, are now going further than any of the previous ones? There's two reasons. Firstly, the idea of the 5G networks is essentially, at the moment, we're using between 2 and 5 gigahertz as the kind of frequency we operate in. That's become very, very congested. The idea of 5G is to go a little bit further up the spectrum, between 6 and 25 gigahertz. And that sounds like a huge increase, but on the scheme of the electromagnetic spectrum, that's nothing. The most powerful photon or particle of light uh, that could be a 5G particle would still be about 17,000 times less energetic than the weakest possible visible light. So if you're really, really concerned about 5G, you should be terrified of light bulbs. The other part of it, I think, is that people need to build more transmitters. They're lower power, but you have to build a lot more of them. People see this, they see these being put on poles and things like that, and they get panicky. But the bigger factor, I think, is the rise of disinformation online. The anti-5G conspiracy is sustained through videos and articles posted on social media. One man in particular is the focal point of the movement. Mark Still. This is an environmental reckless crime. Mark's online ramblings about 5G have taken a more extreme position, with his videos being shared widely. We've got LED street lights and gateshead with 5G technology attached to it. We've got children bleeding from the nose. We've got people being sick. We've got people dying. Mark. Hi, Josh. You told us to meet you outside Gateshead Council and you've recently had a dispute, a conflict with them. Can you tell me a bit about that? Gateshead Council said I was a conspiracy theorist and that's why they had to get me gagged because I was frightening people in the local community, vulnerable people, by telling them that the 5G LED streetlight would kill them. If you look around, you see here, there's no birds. And that was because of the levels of radiation that we were measuring in the area. If you look around here, you'll see there's no bees, no wasps, there's nothing. There's absolutely not a single sparrow. This is impossible. In fact, there was one of the free papers where they've said they've went on holiday. Well, I'd like to know where the sparrows go on holiday, because they're an indigenous bird. The 25 milliwatt transmitter on the top of that streetlight. Where's that? That's it there. It's an area on top of a lamp. And you're saying this is what sends a 5G signal? It's called a DEW, D-E-W, direct energy weapon. That's what's in underneath that small black cover. The antenna that's in that streetlight, that's just a cover. People who often will confidently assert conspiracy theories, really, when they are tested, often have the, the lowest level of knowledge about the thing on which they opine. I think that belief is a strange thing. I think you can convince yourself you believe something if it makes you feel good about yourself. One of the biggest motivators of people spreading these conspiracy theories is the idea of them having special knowledge. So it doesn't matter if you're an expert in that field, they know more than you because you're a part of the conspiracy or you're just an idiot. So that's called illusory superiority or illusory knowledge. And it's very, very alluring to certain people. Narcissism is a factor behind this. When people spread conspiracy theories, they get a sense of uh, satisfaction out of it. They feel like they're special. So sometimes the people perpetuating this are doing it for their own gratification, but at a long-term cost to public understanding of science and medicine, and ultimately sometimes to public health. Yeah, most definitely. Fear is a great motivator in the spread of misinformation online. 
but Mark himself seems to have been convinced about the dangers of 5G. I wear this protective eyewear 24 7. The sunglasses? These, well, the mirror lens, that iridium coat and that mirror lens, what it does, it reflects the microwave radiation back out. That's how I know how dangerous this microwave radiation is. How many of us would you say are being affected by 5G? Millions, millions across Europe. The report. But we're not, we're not feeling any of the symptoms. Well, not yet. You'll have a few dodgy nights, maybe a bit of a panic attack. Uh, you don't know what's caused it. You just think you may have had a bad night on the drink. For all you know, it's microwave radiation on the transmitter outside your bedroom window. The vast majority of people are asleep. The plan of action is to increase our number across the country and to increase the resistance against this crime and bring the criminals behind it to court and to justice. This is bigger than the Holocaust. If anybody thinks that this is going to kill six million, think again. This is going to kill billions. You have people that I would count as victims of conspiracy theories. They, they hear frightening things and they become uh, reticent or, 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 or terrified. A lot of the people that are now apprehensive of 5G aren't died in the world conspiracy theorists, they've just heard something scary. Mark has raised over 30,000 pounds from various crowdfunding links in order to pay for legal costs. This money comes from loyal followers like Greg and Claire, who have blamed their health problems on 5G and electromagnetic radiation. Hiya. Hi, uh, Greg, yeah. Josh. Hi, it's nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Come on in. They're so concerned about radiation that they've put baking foil on their walls to block the signals. Would you like to switch my phone off? Yes, please. No problem. Can you tell me about your quirky decoration? We were getting ill from the RF pollution in the area, so it was coming from, from next door, um, next yeah, their Wi-Fi. We approached her and she basically said, I don't care. And I'm like, all right, fine. So I watched a couple of videos, looked into materials for, um, for blocking um, Wi-Fi uh, routers. And the thing that came up the best was good old fashioned baker foil. From the neighbor's Wi-Fi upstairs in the passage at the top. It's microwave radiation, folks, RF. What was the thing that kind of made you realise that your illness was connected to it the It was signals? the 5G. Uh, I found about the 5G in Gateshead. And my friend came into us one day and she says, my son's starting to bleed at the nose. I thought, blooming heck, this is, this is what I'm getting. I felt like I was dying. I really did. I, I thought, I, yeah, yeah, well, I wanted to so die. So it was actual physical pain? Yeah, yeah. It was physical awful. pain. Because people say it's psychosomatic, it's in your head. That's bollocks, right? Had you consulted a GP before you had sort It's of... not recognised. Yeah, it's GPs. The GPs don't recognise it. Not even your symptoms. No. no, no, they'll blame it on something else. Yeah. People saying that these 5G, 5G masks or whatever have been put into their area, and all of a sudden they've started to feel unwell, having nosebleeds, headaches. Well, what's what's brought that about? See, that's this is a classic example of what's called the nocebo effect. If you look at the history of electromagnetic hypersensitivity, which is ostensibly an illness people get where they're allergic to Wi-Fi. Is that real? Is electromagnetic It's not recognised by the WHO, real? it's not recognised by any medical body. The psychosomatic component that these people are truly suffering is recognised. They most certainly are. An illness, even if it is not caused by what you think it is, is still something that you don't want people to suffer. But what they do, or what they have done in the past, are called provocation studies, where you essentially put someone who, who identifies as allergic to phone signal into a room, with a box and you tell them the box is transmitting radio frequency signals and they immediately act ill. Often that box is not a real box, it's a sham source. The fact that they have to be aware or at least think they're aware of a source being there or not is indicative of the fact that this is a conditioned response. This is a response to what they perceive is going to happen to them rather than being caused by the thing itself. And for that reason, electromagnetic hypersensitivity is not recognized as an illness caused by electromagnetic radiation. So you guys said you did a lot of research on YouTube about basically what you were experiencing. So did the internet actually provide you solutions to your symptoms? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. well, we did the research. So there's, no, there's nothing else out there, where else you can go, really. Yeah, I got in touch with Mark Steele about um, our friend's boy bleeding at the nose at school. He says, yeah, it's it's radio frequency radiation poisoning. If you hadn't come across Mark and all of his teachings, do you think you would be on the path that you're on now? No. No, we wouldn't. We'd still be suffering and not knowing what's going on. Probably would have gone to GPs, yeah. being put on a lot of medication that actually is poison anyway. Yeah. Getting sicker and sicker and sicker and eventually die. People do tend to have fears about new technology. We share things that outrage or frighten us a lot more than things that are more sober headed. So if I see two headlines, one saying 5G is unlikely to cause us any harm, and another one that says 
5G is going to kill us all, I'm far more likely to share the one that gives me the prophecies of doom. And that's human nature, unfortunately, and something that in the internet age, we really have to be a little bit more skeptical if we're to avoid the negative implications of that. We've built a society around much of which pivots on science and technology, and yet cleverly arrange things that most no one understands science and technology. I think it goes back to the fact that we have this amazing tool in the internet, yet we still have all these human vices, and at the moment we've kind of combined them in a terrible way. We do need to learn to be more pragmatic, more skeptical, and more prone to reflect rather than react. And until we do that, we're going to use social media and the internet to harm ourselves more than help ourselves.